Cloud9 Vaping, sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. And good evening. And good evening to Dave as well. Um, it's Sunday, the 8th of December, 2013. So it's nearly Christmas. It's like two more shows before Christmas, something like that. Yeah. So, yes, we're feeling right festive, aren't we, mate? Uh, oh, yeah, I suppose. I can I've see got you've got your Christmas good. jumper on anyway. Yeah, red and green, red and green. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You do realise that if you're an insomniac, it's only two more sleeps till Christmas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, right, so tonight on Dave's Tackle Box, we're going to be having a chat and and we're going to be asking you, the guys in chat as well, for your opinions on what does appropriate regulation for e-cigs actually look like? What should it look like? We've talked a lot about medical regulation not being appropriate and the, the problems that that would bring, but what should regulation look like? So we're going to have a chat about that. We're also going to be having a look at this thing. See, this is live. Look, there's my hand, and um, which is rather wonderful. But as everything seems to be the way with me, there's a story behind it. Uh, but we'll start with the titles. And off we go, eventually. <laughs> uh, right, okay, yes, so, uh, as I say, tonight we want to talk about uh, what appropriate regulation should look like. I've already seen in chat there, there was a comment about uh, uh, restriction of sales to um, under-18s, for example. Or restricting it from under-18s, be probably more correct. Um, but that's the kind of thing with, that, that we want to talk about. So we're going to come to that uh, in about 15 minutes time, I would guess. Um, before we do that, I want to talk about my new toy. And there it is. Doesn't it look good? And, um, well, I'll play you the VT because I, I, I was quite excited about this arriving. And if anybody's been uh, following me on Twitter, they'll have watched the exchanges and the photographs of this thing as it was being built and prepared and shipped to me. Um, but as always seems to be the case with me, there was a twist. <laughs> I'll play you the VT, see what you think. A short while ago, a large box arrived. An extremely large box from France. And I knew exactly what was in it. Uh, I was going to film me opening this box because I'm quite excited actually. This is like an early Christmas present from me to me. <laughs> um, but uh, it was, I'm a bit cramped for space in here, which is kind of one of the, the reasons that I bought this thing. Because uh, anybody that watches my show regularly or has seen any of my YouTube videos may have noticed that I've got rather a lot of e cig mods and gear and stuff accumulating on the shelf behind my head and uh, well it needs organising somehow so uh, so like I say I treated myself to this 
Now, what this is in this bubble wrap here that came all the way from France is a custom made, specified by me, e-cig stand. Stand isn't really going to do this justice. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't taken the bubble wrap off. I've seen a photograph of it while it was a work in progress uh, by the guys that made it at e-cig stands. Um, but I can see a little bit of it through the bubble wrap here and it looking good already but stand doesn't really do this justice this is like a piece of furniture and uh, I'm, I'm really quite excited to get it open and start loading it up so uh, let's see now, Sue from E6 stands according to her husband who made this likes her bubble wrap so uh, I have to say I think it's rather well packaged doesn't look too extreme uh, I'm going to open this with a bit of care because I don't want to go through it with a blade. Because that has happened to this. It's probably an easier trick to open it this if you know how it was put on, but I'm impatient and I've got a knife. So here it is, out of its packaging. I've rejigged the camera angle and everything so you can see me and, and let's face it, the important part of this shot. Uh, and you can see straight away that it's uh, calling it a stand probably doesn't do it justice. It is a piece of furniture. It's a piece of furniture that was made by Martin from Esig Stands. Um, to the specifications I gave to his wife Sue. Uh, they're based in northern France and I'll put the uh, URL of their website up here. Um, basically I saw some pictures of, uh, of furniture they'd done actually I looked at a bigger piece than this and I was really tempted to go for it but then um, basically we just talked about what I wanted it to be and uh, <laughs> and this was the result uh, I'll just show you very quickly some of the features before we actually start trying to fill things up um, it's uh, obviously got four drawers which I can use for all my bits uh, you saw in the opening shots there that uh, things aren't very organised on the shelf at the moment, so I'm hoping it'll help. I'm hoping that it'll help me with that. Uh, we've got uh, just a bit for five ten threaded devices to stand in at the back there. We've got the second tier here, which is uh, Ego five ten fittings, so things like my Evods and all their similar Ego threaded atomizers can go on there. Then we've got room for an awful lot of drip tips. And then it went a bit wrong, as you saw. <laughs> uh, the drip tip holes needed to be 9mm in diameter, and they were all 8mm. So what I did, the first thing I did uh, uh, was I thought to myself, oh blast. But then I went back to the email exchange that I had with e stands with Sue uh, when we were figuring out what needed to be where. Um, and there was a bit of confusion, let's put it that way. <laughs> we weren't as clear with each other as we could have been on what size hole we needed. Um, but anyway, yeah, the, the, we... we, 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 we I had to think about the best solution and what I, the, the e-cig stands offered to just give me a new stand simple as that no questions asked but i thought that would be a bit harsh for me to demand that uh i've got a pillar drill downstairs i'm perfectly capable of drilling those holes out myself and uh knowing that if i screwed it up that they'd see me all right anyway i thought that was great so uh, thanks guys for um I, I think this was the best solution uh i suppose if there's a moral in there Check and double check your measurements, guys, before you order anything. Uh, we we got to a great solution. I'm very happy with the way it's worked out. Uh, so a little bit earlier on, I uh, took the drawers out of this this stand and I took it down to my garage. Managed to clear enough of a space in the in the uh, rubble in the garage. And as the pictures up here will be showing you about now. I drilled the 8mm holes out to 9mm. Now unfortunately I lack Martin's skill. <laughs> 
so I did mess one of them up but it's okay it's not going to upset me greatly so um, um, there'll be no close-ups of the holes I drilled <laughs> Uh, but I've now got a functioning stand. You can see it behind me now. Uh, drip tips do now fit. And uh, if I just find a drip tip, I can even demonstrate this. I hope this works now. There we go, look. Whee! Drip tip fits perfectly in there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put it into place and start filling it up. So there we go, that's uh, a lot of stuff loaded into it. It's made the shelf a lot more tidy than it was, but there's a lot more tidying to be done. <laughs> I've popped wire and a few bits and bobs into some of these drawers, but what I'm actually gonna do now is put all the stuff that I use fairly regularly into them. Um, okay, I couldn't fit all my stuff in there, uh, but I think you'll agree that it uh, does a rather fine job, and I clearly need some more drip tips. I've only about half filled those. And I had to use some of the drip tip holes for things like the Penelope and stuff like that. Well, hey, it works just fine. That's my eSig stand. So I got this from eSig Stands, aka Martin and Sue, and they've done. Uh, I think they've done a brilliant job. We had a hiccup. Uh, they were great to deal with to come up with a solution. Um, I'm really pleased. It's exactly what I was after. It even matches my shelf and my desk. What more can I say? For, for those that want to know, it's made of French oak. It was made in uh, in Martin's Stone Workshop in, in France. Um, it's about a three week lead time altogether because uh, there's got a bit of a, a full order book at the moment. But um, it's well worth it. I'm really pleased with it. Who wouldn't be really? I mean, look at that. Fantastic. It's going to be hard now to decide which eight mods get to stay on there and which ones get like left on the shelf so to speak <laughs> uh, thanks for watching Irk. Irk. The, Irk. The Irk Francais. The Irk Francais. It's a very nice looking piece of kit. It's very and nice. Yes. It looks very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Apart from some of the holes that I drilled. <laughs> well, That's did, just my look though, that isn't it? Gillis did say that he didn't want to look at your wrecked hole. I, <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> going to show him my wrecked hole, as it you'll be <laughs> pleased to know, Gillis. <laughs> It did look good. It was quite funny. I was watching uh, some of the speculation in chat there about how much it cost, and it wasn't that much, guys. It wasn't that much. Five pound twenty-three. More than that, though. Six pound twenty. More than that. It was forty-five quid postage. <laughs> well, it came from France, and to be fair, it arrived in one piece. French irk. The irk. Irk. <laughs> French irk. So, um, yes. and my text just said it'll be twenty-five pound plus. Food. And I see that e sig stand, so I don't know whether that's Martin or Sue, or maybe both of them are in chat. How you doing, Martin and Sue? I can tell them apparently. It was a hundred and fifty-five pounds plus the forty-five postage, so a nice round two hundred of our English pounds. I have no idea what that is in euros, and I don't care. It's more than two hundred. It would be. It would be. Yes, probably a lot. But who cares? They're no use over here.
What it's funny, actually. They, they could have charged me in euros, couldn't they? They could have done, yeah. yeah. But they didn't. They didn't. They charged me in pounds, which is good. Because <laughs> I earn everything in Swiss francs. <laughs> but the... Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhat. Mr. Dibley has just said that that's very cheap for that class of work. Um, I personally think that it is incredible value because somebody made a joke about the Antiques Roadshow and I was th I'll admit I was sitting in here earlier as I was editing this because the little bit where the things suddenly appear in the stand that took ages to edit you can mm -hmm. imagine how long that took to edit uh, mm -hmm. but I thought um, I was sitting there thinking you know if this came up on Antiques Roadshow in a hundred years time or something well by the time you're my age you'd be an antique yeah there'd be one <laughs> there'd be uh, the, 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 the next century's equivalent of Hugh what's his face saying oh this is a very early 21st century e-cig stand but some real cowboys had a go at drilling the holes out <laughs> so it's worth shit <laughs> oh, I think it's safe to say this is now longer original <laughs> but uh, I have to say um, it is absolutely beautifully made it's solid um, I mean close up now it looks every bit as good as it does in that shot behind me uh, do, you know, do you know the really frustrating part of it for me Dave what's that mate it's if I was actually sitting in this little box that's on your table you could I steal my stuff couldn't you <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 just let you into a secret Dave you're actually holding it up uh, well. <laughs> so uh, yeah no it was uh, just looking at the comments there no not a bad price at all not a bad price and I must admit uh, uh, I, I, I deliberated for a while but then I you know I had a good chat with myself and decided I was worth it that's it don't move Dave don't move so uh, anyway <laughs> it's time for us to take our first break and when we come back we're going to talk about regulation what's good regulation what's bad regulation and uh, we'll be back in a minute therefore of Dave's Tackle Box. And welcome back. Now, okay, uh, I did just one of the comments I saw in chat as that went past there, uh, as we as we were in our break there. Um, I can't remember what it was now. There was a there was a comment I was going to respond to. Somebody, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's back. Um, somebody said, "Yeah, I need a second one because I couldn't fit all my stuff in it." Um, but I, I, you you could be right. You could be right. And there is room for another one. However, I'm probably I'll probably get rid of some stuff instead. No, get another stand, man. Yeah, it might happen. That would involve going to the post office and things, wouldn't it? To do what? Pick it if up. I was getting rid of stuff, selling oh, stuff. Oh, you don't want to get rid of stuff. You never know when you're going to need it. No, I mean, yeah, exactly. So it's not going to happen, basically. So I'll probably end oh, up getting. So you need another stand. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, Dave, the rule of thumb on these is that easy. Count up the number of mods that you have and order one with twice as many holes. Double it, yeah. <laughs> well, if I'd have done that, though, I don't think it would have fitted in here. Then get a bigger room. Well, I'm working on that. <laughs> I'm working on that. My son's going to university soon. So. Right, um, 
We, we better get on with the show. Should we play the I did? Go on then. Okay, so the main topic for tonight is regulation. Uh, everybody is involved in campaigning against the medical regulation uh, or whatever they're calling it at this particular moment in time coming from uh, the EU. Um, by the back door. Well, quite, quite. And, 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 and that, that, that's a great place to kick this discussion off, Dave. Just remind us of what the current situation, the, 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 the current proposals, the thing that, that we're most worried about at the moment, and what it actually looks like, what it actually means. Well, if, if everybody was watching last week when I dropped the subtle hints and, and, and so on and so forth, they will have realised that effectively at that point in time, what the proposals meant was that there would be nothing but either disposables or things with replaceable but not refillable cartridges that were limited, limited to a 10 milligram per cartridge nicotine level. It was effectively a ban on Generation 2 and Generation 3 devices. But there's been another proposal that has been leaked. And we've seen it. And the bit about the, uh, the cartridges has been struck out. So now, what we're left with is a proposal which limits e-cigs that would be placed on the market to being disposables that contain no more than 10 milligrams of nicotine in a maximum 20 milligram per milliliter juice that's in them. But further down the recitals, you see a little line put in there that says, of course, higher nicotine concentration juice might be available were it to be authorised as a medicine. So right. in fact, what the Commission is <clears throat> now proposing is what it had originally proposed which was that anything below a particular threshold would be allowed on the market without meds regs, but anything above that threshold, and now they've actually doubled the thresholds up, it has to be effectively generation one and disposable and no more than 10 milligram of nicotine in it. Anything generation two or generation three or with a higher level of nicotine would have to have medicinal authorization in order to be put on the market. But it gets even better than that, or worse. What they've also done is they've looked at what the European Parliament proposed in Amendment 170. We've gone, oh, look, they've banned advertising. Oh, we'll keep that bit. Yeah, we like that bit, we like that. That's more restrictive, <laughs> we'll do that. And, oh, while we're on, we can extend that. Now, I've been seeing some conversations about this in various different places, saying that the ban, or the effective ban, on the likes of Vape Trails, on the likes of UKV, on the likes of, well, not ECF, because that's in the States, but on the likes of uh, Planet of the Vapes, ACR, and all of the other forums, and all of the European forums, they're saying, well, that's illegal, they can't do that. Listen, they already know that what they're doing, even before this proposal came up, they had advice from their legal advisors, the Commission's legal advisors. This is not just the jury committee that said it was illegal, but the Commission's legal advisors have said it's illegal but as ever in the european parliament they do this a lot they go well i don't care we're doing it anyway and we'll sort the snots out and, and i think that's the, one of the things because we saw this fairly early on didn't we because jury from day one have said you can't regulate these as medical devices mm -hmm. and you know and they've just basically totally ignored it and gone several stages closer to making it legislation mm -hmm. so it's, I guess it's only against the law if somebody decides to enforce the law or, or it's only a problem being against the law if it, somebody it, kicks up. It, it, it's only a problem for the EU legislature if somebody realises that what they've done is not legal and challenges it via the usual routes of the various different courts that are available to various different member states ending up in the European Court of Justice. But they are aware that the European Court of Justice, in its top man, has said, effectively, 
this is not legal. You have no legal basis for doing this. You can't do this legally. But they just blithely banter on with it. And, of course, the best way of dealing with all of this would be to park Article 18, anything to do with ECs, you just park that off to one side. That's all they need to do. Park it off to one side. Carry on with the rest of the tobacco-related stuff because it's a tobacco products directive. And then come back and give bespoke regulation for ECs. That's what they need to do. Not just ECs, but other nicotine-containing products. And I would lump snus and everything else in that. <clears throat> it's time that this was actually sorted out properly without all of these strange horse trade machinations you have a dog's dinner at the making of the whole thing because aside from anything else it's bringing the EU into disrepute now even if you take all of the conspiracy theories and everything out of it this smacks of legislation on the hoof the making it up as they go along because they can't have had time to do the required research that they need, they haven't consulted stakeholders, and we're stakeholders, every last one of us that uses an EC is a stakeholder, they haven't consulted industry, and there's more industry now than there was when this started, they haven't consulted public health correctly because they've only looked at one particular segment of public health, and basically their procedures have gone off the rails. They know this, but they're just worried that the Tobacco Products Directive won't get through before the new Parliament. And there are all sorts of reasons for that, which I'm not going to go into. Um, but they're just worried it's not going to get through. Well, here's a message for everybody in the EU, everybody in Brussels and Strasbourg next week. It's dead simple. Take e-cigs and nicotine-containing products out of it and look at them properly over a period of time at the moment there is no problem well th this is this is a point that clive bates has been making for some time now hasn't he, he yes. he's, he's saying it's poor regulation isn't it and that the, 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 there's there's a tried and tested method for introducing legislation and, and regulation and uh, and it involves exactly what you've just described you know at, for a start not just trying to sort of drag it through uh, as an afterthought on the back of something else, in this case, Tobacco Products Directive. Well, they, they didn't think it was going to be an issue. They thought it would just sail through and nobody would notice. They didn't realise it was going to become the most contentious issue of the TPD. Well, it just shows you how frigging clueless they are, really, doesn't it? Well, if they're serious about the rest of the TPD, it, 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 it's as obvious as the nose on my face, and God knows it's big enough. <laughs> um, they just need to park it to one side and give it the attention it properly deserves. Because if they get this wrong, the biggest possible public health dividend, and this is not my words, this is Robert West's words, could go up in smoke because they just haven't dealt with it properly. And they need to deal with it properly. And we've got to make our voices heard and get them to deal with it properly. It's pointless just sitting on our thumbs waiting for something to happen because if we do that, the game is up. The jig is lost. Yeah. I think that sums it up pretty well. Now, obviously, the, 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 you, you've outlined for us there brilliantly what, what the latest uh, proposals, call it med regs, call it med regs by the back door, whether it's legal or illegal, um, whether it would survive a challenge in the courts if, it, if they did pass it through or not. Um, but it does sort of beg the question, you know, um, what regulation do we actually need for these things, okay? And when I say these things, I, I, I always think we're talking, really, we're talking about e-liquid. Um, I don't, personally, I don't think we need any additional regulations for, a bat, for batteries and electronic products. Personally. I, I, th I think there's an interaction between the two that needs more research so that, I mean, for instance, if you, if you look at, at what happens stateside, we've got people running sub ohm coils running it up to 25 and 32 watts in places like that. Yeah, and that's going to generate some heat. It's definitely going to generate some heat. And there needs we, we need to take that kind of thing into account. We need to know what is actually not going to be more dangerous than what we'd already been using. Now, that's not to say that it's going to be, but we need to know that. I think we also do need to have 
a lot more control by vendors and by manufacturers on the ingredients in juice. But it's not just that, because when you look at what is currently in the proposals, they're talking about a complete ban on advertising. Well, that is just completely bloody stupid, isn't it? Well, it is really. They, they need to be advertised. If people don't know that they're there, where do Exactly, they exactly. I mean, you know, it's... Um, but you, you could almost see it being one of those ridiculous political compromises. You, you know, you could, you could see it happening. Well, absolutely right. And, and I, I think at, at this point in time, I probably need to put my cards on the table face up so everybody knows. In, in terms of political leanings, I, th I think you'd probably call me um, a libertarian. And what that basically means is I think people are responsible for themselves and I think they're responsible for their own decisions. So I'm not in any way, shape or form here talking about a situation where people are coerced into doing something they don't want to do. What I want to see is choice, freedom of choice for everybody. And that means that if somebody chooses to use an e-cig, that's their choice, that's their responsibility, as long as they have all of the information that's available. Exactly the same applies to smoking lit tobacco. If that's what somebody wants to do, that's their choice, that's their responsibility, and there is no way on the face of this planet would I remove that choice from them. And I want that made, I need everybody to know that. Yeah, well, but, I, I know that that's your stance, and it's also my stance as well. Uh, um, I wouldn't go as far as describing my, my overall politics as libertarian, but uh, I do believe in the right to choice. Um, and uh, I know lots of people who smoke and if they want to do that that's that should be their right well exactly right and, but that, that informs what I was going to say next because we're talking here about a public health dividend now we are told by those in public health who you would have thought you should be able to trust but who you cannot necessarily but we are told by them that one in two smokers of lit tobacco will suffer an early death as a result, blah, 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 all of that. If you believe that, and patently there are people that do, then introducing something like an electronic cigarette, which is at the moment reckoned to be 1% of the risk of smoking lit tobacco, must generate massive public health dividends because within 20 years, judging by every projection I've seen, and, this is, and I've seen a lot of them now, within 20 years, you would be looking at the situation where the smokers of lit tobacco were limited to between two and 5%. The bit that cheers me about that is that that would be achieved by choice, not by coercion, not by bans not by dehumanisation, but by making something available which an awful lot of people are finding to be a more satisfying experience. And Lord knows, everybody, all the way through life, you know, you go out and you drive your mate's car that's a clapped-out banger, and then you go and drive your other mate's car that's smooth and everything else, and you think, I'd rather have one of them than one of them. Yeah, yeah. Be better than your car. And it's, it, the, same, the same applies with suitcases, with watches, with cookers, with mixers, you name it. The same thing applies. If it's all done by choice, I have no problem with it. Yeah. What I do have a problem with is what these people in Brussels, not so much the MEPs, because a lot of them listen, but certainly the Commission and to some degree the Council appear to be doing their best to turn Europe into a totalitarian state. And that, I think, is what we need to object to, to get vocal about, and stop them doing it. They are trying to control us, not by coercion, not by persuasion, but by outright bloody bans, because that's what these proposals they've just come up with amount to. It's a ban on everything I've got on my desk. It's a ban on everything I hold dear. And it's wrong, and we need to stop it. It absolutely is wrong. There was an interesting comment uh, went past in chat there. Uh, and I'll see if I can attribute it to the right person. Um, but it was a question, in fact, asking whether MEPs 
have the ability to get Article 18, which is the easing bit, uh, for want of a better description, dropped from the discussions so the TPD can go through. I'm sorry, it scrolled past before I could uh, uh, find yes, out so who I, actually typed it. But it's I, a very valid I, question, and it's one that, that I've asked myself, and it's one that we've asked of as many people as who listen, really. And, um, and, you know, my understanding of this is that uh, the MEPs, they've already made their play at this stage. They made their play. They went for Amendment 170. Yes. Which was the uh, what Rebecca Taylor called, uh, she called, described politics as the art of the achievable. And, and this was the achievable compromise, Amendment yes. 170. So it, was, it wasn't perfect. It was a damn sight better than... The, 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 the counter-argument in the trialogue process at the moment. Now, my understanding of it is that at, right now, y your your general sort of um, parliament, the, the MEPs themselves, can't affect what's going on in trialogue directly, can they? No. it's, it's They can it's, pressure any representatives they've got in there, I guess. They can, yes. But it's, it's quite a complex procedure. And I, I took some advice on it earlier to deal and I'm not going to use the right words because I can't remember them, but effectively, you'll remember at the end of the vote, Linda McEvan asked for a particular legislative um, resolution to be suspended so that she would have a mandate to go into negotiation with Council and Commission. That's right, yeah. yeah. Now, the, the legislative resolution, had they gone on that, it would have gone then across the Council. And it would have been discussed there, and then it would that would have required a second reading in the European Parliament. Right. The suspension of the legislative resolution meant that she could go and start negotiating. And the idea behind it is that it kind of short circuits the process. Yeah, yeah. So that um, she can go back to the, to, to the, the Parliament itself and say, "Right, here's what it is." Now, at that point in time. Parliament can seek to amend what has come back and say, actually, no, we don't like it, and here's what we'd rather have. And they could, were they so minded, seek to amend Article 18 out. Yeah, okay. And that, I think, is what they need to do. And I'm not alone in that. Uh, absolutely not. There's there's quite there's quite a a, a lot of support for it uh, out there. I think, uh, unfortunately, not a majority view at the moment. Um, it's gaining traction actually. Okay. Um, I'm actually seeing uh, the European Public Health Association EFA are. I won't even say paying lip service. They're actually one of their representatives has been quite forthright about it and said yes indeed it needs to be taken out and i think you've seen the same thing Dave. absolutely uh, uh given advice on how we can uh, make ourselves hurt as well uh, heard as well i think the advice was uh get organized get active and make a lot of trouble yes was the advice well, we got from the EFA representative i'm i'm certainly up for making a lot of trouble oh, god knows i've been trying my best to do that no the, 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 the bottom, bottom line on it is there is a growing level of support for removing article 18 out of the tpd because patently you can't legislate on the hoof like this and get even close to getting it right because they're missing some of the the massive salient points on this i mean the fact of the matter is that if Everybody is aware that e-cigs are there and that they are massively safer, massively less risky than smoking tobacco or cigarettes, if we're to believe what we're told, then they're going to try them. And if the likes of the Generation 2 devices, the Egos, the Ego Twists, the, the Vision Egos, the Aspires, all of the current stuff that's working very well for people, if they can get their hands on those and try them somewhere where there are, or oh, I don't know, 300 different flavours available for them to try, at some point they're going to find something that they like. And I, for the life of me, I cannot understand why there are opponents to this particular setup, to this particular prospect. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. 
And, yep. and the ones that are opposing this are the ones that are most vocal in their opposition to tobacco cigarettes. And that's the bit I don't understand. Well, there's an awful lot not to understand in, in this entire process. Dave, we can take a break at this point. Sure. Uh, we'll be back in a minute or so. And, uh, and we'll try and pick out what we can from chat. I can see there's lots of stuff being typed in there furiously. Um, we'll be I right back. Have, I perhaps should have put the red hair extensions in and then I could have done a salve. <laughs> no, it wouldn't have worked. Cloud9 Vaping. Sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. And we're back in the room. Welcome back, everybody. Okay, so um, I'm just going to pick up on a comment that just popped up in chat, actually. And uh, this is from Mark Shaw. And he's saying last night uh, he was discussing the anti-tobacco crowd, and it's all about this end game. And I'll do the little inverted commas thing here, yeah? Uh, scenario they all dream about. And Mark's take on this is the end game basically is the end of the tobacco companies. I, I completely agree. They see e cigs as a lifeline for the tobacco companies to survive, regardless of if they sell a product that is more or less harmless. And this is a point that I've kind of made a few times in these kinds of discussions. Um, the, the, we're getting this stuff rammed down our throats on the basis, uh, on, the, on the back of a health initiative. And I am convinced that for many people involved in tobacco control, the end game actually is destruction of the tobacco industry. Well, that, that's, it's, that's it's, abs it's absolutely the case. It, it, it's just, it's an almost a rabid hatred of the tobacco companies. If the tobacco companies suddenly announced that they got a cure for cancer, they'd discredit it off these buggers because it yeah. came from them. Yeah, uh, the, the bottom line <laughs> is they've lost sight of what the true enemy is. And in all of this, I mean, let, uh, you know, let, let's get the facts out there. Nicotine and caffeine are two sides of the same coin, two peas in the same pod. One's a powder, the other's a liquid. That's about the only difference between them. In terms of addictive potential, they're roughly the same. In terms of the, the risk to the user, they're roughly the same. In terms of everything, the effect they have, they are broadly the same. Three areas where they are pretty much identical. And from that point of view, these people have got to learn to divorce nicotine from smoked lit tobacco. When you do that, the logic behind everything becomes so much clearer in, in all sorts of different ways. If the true enemy in all of this is COPD, lung cancer, and all of the various other nasties that are claimed to be caused by smoking lit tobacco. Why? Yeah, I, I, I wish I had the answer to that because it, it just doesn't stack up, does it? It doesn't There's stack no up. I, I think you summed it up perfectly there, Dave. They have they've forgotten 
what the enemy is in all of this. The enemy mm. is the, 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 the supposed disease and, and, and the threat to life and health. It's not a bunch of guys in offices. <laughs> the bottom line on it is, I mean, Stan Glantz said um, live so everybody could hear it, and this was this is a couple of months back on a broadcast that we were, we were dipping in and out of one Thursday night. He said, if all of the tobacco companies would move straight across to EC now and stop producing cigarettes, he would be a very happy bunny and he would support them. Until that happens, though, he's going to oppose e cigs That's the bottom line. Because, again, he wants to see an end of tobacco sales. Now, as a libertarian, I, I don't, I'm not pushing for that. I'm not looking for that. I think that will happen, and it will happen by choice. And that's the, that's the big thing. But you've got a lot of other people worldwide, worldwide, that want to see the tobacco companies and the World Health Organization is the biggest bloody culprit in this. They want to punish the tobacco companies. They want to see them fail spectacularly and go up in a big blue flash, losing billions and billions of pounds and dollars. They, they want to see them gone. It's that simple. It's, it's a punitive measure for them. And what they need to remember is while they're trying to punish the tobacco companies, they're bloody well killing us. That, uh, that's the thing, isn't it? We're, we're, we're the, uh, the the fodder in, in all of this. Yes. Uh, it, 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 it's scary. I mean, uh, Russell Lord made a point uh, just there. I'm just going to scroll back and see if I can get it word for word. If I can't, I'll paraphrase. His point was that they've been telling us that tobacco companies are the enemy for so long now that we now believe it and 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 i have to agree to to a large extent i think uh, i think um there's there's uh, we, we know ex-smokers are anti-smokers as a general it used to be a joke do you remember before yeah. e-cigs were around there, there, there was it was a running joke among smokers that there was nothing worse than a reformed smoker oh bloody hell they were oh god <laughs> and, and i'm going to be honest i see it in vapors too jesus yeah, i see it, it in vapors too Yes, you don't want to be smoking those there bed for you. Make your teeth go brown. That's you it. Drop, you'll fall out. You'll end up with bloody eyebrows. I don't know. But honestly, seriously, no. Just say no. Just say no. Don't do it. No. 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 Exactly. And uh, and it, it, there's no need for it, I think. Uh, I mean, in another world, if this had played out differently and maybe if there'd have been, um, you know, maybe if there'd have been a bit more thoughts and a bit more time put into the announcements of these the uh, the tobacco product directive revisions that came out was almost exactly a year ago wasn't it december the 19th there you go um so in another world smokers and vapors might have allied to fight against this thing i think we should i i i think we should too i think i you know for, for just just for what it's worth as you did yourself, put my cards on the table, right? I think banning menthol. Uh, there's a part of me that that is offended by the attempt to ban menthol tobacco cigarettes, right? I, I mean, I don't like them, but that's not the point. There's a part of me that's offended by it. And there's a part of part of me that finds it absolutely hysterical because it will achieve nothing. Excuse my French. Fuck all. Yes, people will just make like a mild tobacco. Well, no, they don't even have to do that. <laughs> there is nothing in the Tobacco Products Directive it's, as it's currently couched to prevent anybody from taking something like, let's say, a drip tip that uh -huh. has at the other end uh, a, a, an eight point four millimeter hole into which a tobacco cigarette can fit, and having a little menthol crystal pouch well, in quite. drip tip through which you draw the smoke and which therefore mentholates what you are smoking. Uh, just, have you patented dense. that yet? <laughs> it's already been done. Oh, there you go. It's been around it's, for years, since the 50s. It's Again, just a it ridiculous, just, ridiculous it's, it's, token gesture. It, it, it just goes to show how poorly researched these people are. That's the bottom line. They're not properly researched. And if they're not properly researched, they cannot generate good legislation. It's not possible to do. If you haven't got all of the facts at your fingertips, 
how the hell can you draw a logical conclusion? And they haven't. <laughs> uh, Russell's repeated his exact comment. He's saying they pretend that cigarette companies are the enemy and now we believe it. It's all about control and the removal of choice and freedom. And I, th I think I think we've that's pretty much what we've said tonight, isn't it? I, I do see this as an assault on my freedom of choice. You know, regardless of whether I was a vapor or not, if if I'd never smoked, never vaped, and I heard about this, and knew the detail that I know about this, I'd be offended by it. Well, I think there's a lot of people are taking offence, and I, I'm, but I, I, I've got to make a plea here if I can. We really do have to be careful on the social media to not come across as um, what's the word I'm looking for, anti-social louts. If we're engaging with people, I think we have to engage sensibly, level-headedly. Um, and if we see somebody, I think that's fair, yeah, yeah if, we're, if if somebody's making some headway, leave them to it. For, be there, be seen, you know, do the retweets and everything else. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, there is the possibility. I mean, well, there are certain public health people that are engaging. There are certain other ones who have been offered the choice, the chance, to meet in a brokered meeting with somebody who is pretty much... Okay. <clears throat> I'm, I, I didn't mention the name I Martin just had McKee. something in my throat. All right. I thought, yeah, I thought you said Martin McKee there, in which case I wasn't going to... No, argue. Henry McGee, I said. All oh, right, no, it's Martin McGee. If, McKee, if he's been offered the chance to meet with vapors and to discuss things in an adult manner. He appears not to want to take that opportunity up. And that, I have to say, worries me. Because it needs adult conversations. It needs people on both sides of the, the, the divide getting together in brokered meetings, properly chaired, to discuss these things. And, and, you know, there may be bits that we didn't know, that they know, that they can tell us. I doubt it. And there's lots that we know that they don't, that we can tell them, and, that, and, and they need to be properly informed. We are, as, as a group, as a community, we are the biggest stakeholders in this. And worldwide, there's probably over 30 million people using e -cigs. That is one bloody big cohort of folks that has between them an awful lot of experience and expertise. And all the legislators need to do is to tap into that. And that can all be backed up by proper scientific research and experimentation and stuff like that to find out what actually is the truth. And that all needs to be done, I feel, before any banning type legislation needs to occur. But that again says Article 18 needs to be taken out of the TPD and parked, ready to be worked on so that proper custom built regulation can happen to the benefit of everybody, but most of all, us, the users. Because as I'm always saying, we, that's everybody watching this and everybody watching this on video demand, we are the most important people in this conversation. Well said, The controllers Dave. aren't, the legislators aren't, the tax people aren't, and the businesses aren't. We are, because it's our lives that are on the line. And we want a product that is good. We think we already have that and we're able to advise people. We are the most important. Well said, Dave. And uh, i just uh, going to read out a couple of comments that came up there, actually. Uh, Moonlit is saying, the thing is that not everybody is going to be a, as polite as we'd like. Uh, it's a heated issue and there will always be people who will speak in a less than desirable manner. And I, 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 I recognise that. Yes. I accept that. Um, you know, um, that said... Uh, there was then a comment from Mark Shaw on the subject of uh, Mr. McKee, Martin McKee. He says he's doing a fine job. He's degrading the level of the debate and vapors are jumping onto his hook every time. And I think that's a really valid point. Yes. These guys, uh, we, we've heard a number of them whinging about, oh, the vapors are shouting at me, you know? And some of them, one or two in particular have been real buggers. They have sunk to the depths of trolling on Twitter. Absolutely right. Got the reaction they want and then shown everybody the reaction. You know, 
these aren't rational people you know it it, it undermines us it does do it and I, so i agree i agree with both moonlit and mark shaw there i think uh you know to sort of taking the higher ground when it gets petty and aggressive is is the right thing to do uh, but mark you're dead right these a lot of these guys we're dealing with are quite skilled politicians that's what they do for a living this kind of crap and uh you know I think uh, before you respond to anybody who's in a position of authority or involved, uh, if you like, on the front line of this debate, it's always worth, uh, I, I know I do, the amount of replies that I've typed, but then deleted. <laughs> uh, I've, I've done that a few times, you know, typed it's it before you enter, go and get a cuppa, come back. <laughs> see if it still seems like a good idea because let's face it one of them two, two of them do make your piss boil there's no absolutely doubt absolutely right I mean if, if you get to the point where the red mist is coming down turn it off take the dog for a walk <laughs> or, or, or do something that you enjoy and then come back and look at it again I'm just waiting for somebody in chat to say what do you do if you haven't got a dog <laughs> take the cat for a walk what <laughs> did point out in chat his dog has four legs his cat has four legs therefore his cat's a dog <laughs> okay i can't argue with that logic well you know that's that's the kind of perverted logic it's a bit like stupid. this makes something that looks like smoke therefore it normalizes smoking i guess oh they've changed that oh have they yeah yeah it oh yeah now, go on then it now normalizes smoking behaviors Ah yes, no, I'd seen that. Yes, I had, I had seen that one. And that, and that, means that what Ash said and what what uh, Martin Dockwell has said many, many times in public on telly, on the radio, and everywhere else, he said using an e-cig normalises using an e-cig. It yeah. normalises not smoking. So now it normalises smoking behaviours, yeah. which tells me they know they're losing the argument. I suppose drinking coke through a straw normalises smoking behaviours to a large degree. Um, sucking on a pencil outside on a frosty morning and then uh, breathing vape rings into the frosty air, apparently. Jesus, not... that'll have to be banned. Oh, absolutely. Without, without Sorry, not banned, banned regulated. Regula regulated. Yeah. Hell and back. <laughs> God help my neighbour's car, because every time he starts it, there's a bloody good big smoke ring gets blown out the back of it. <laughs> he needs his big ends, look at Oh, that could so easily go in a certain direction, that conversation. Not tonight. That's only Thursday, yes. <laughs> and our first uh, reference tonight to Bane. <laughs> and Bane Six. <laughs> he he's is pretty not, easy. He's not real. He's not real. I, I'm convinced that this guy is a vapour. I'm convinced of it. He actually posted on the Ban, Ban E6 Facebook page that somebody not too far away set up about a week ago um that he'd actually paid for most of the likes on his facebook page that's why they're all from turkey all oh, right fair enough <laughs> i didn't even know you could do that that shows you how naive i am he's an open invite to be he skips high five stood i'll bring you on to vt talk on wednesday night you can come and put your side of the story and i'll tell you why you're a crass gibbering <laughs> and not real. oh dear Andy, Andy D's just typed in the chat with all due respect is a useful phrase yeah and did you know that there are there are levels of all due respect with, with all due respect means you're a fool yeah with the greatest of respect means you're a gibbering fool with every respect that I can muster means you're a bloody lunatic and want to block it up. <laughs> yeah, with all due respect generally means you don't deserve any. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's time to wind it up. Would you believe that we've just shot through an hour? Like, oh, just like that. Seriously? Seriously. It's time to say goodnight. Good night. <laughs> Good night, everybody, and uh, thank you for watching. And uh, I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.
sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box.